This story happened to a young woman and is told on her behalf. I remember this story almost every day, and what is there to remember, I never forget it. Nor do I forget Milka, my best childhood friend. Milka and I were friends from a very young age. I spent every summer in the village at my grandmother's house, and Milka was a local resident. Our houses were in the neighborhood, and our relatives had known each other for a long time and had a good relationship. Of course, and Chalky, almost from the moment I first found myself in the village, became my friend. Milka was a very mischievous, fun-loving and cheerful girl. Blonde with big blue eyes and plump lips. She probably looked like an angel, but at the same time she was a fighting girl with a boyish character. I was more of a shy, shy, green-eyed brown girl. In general, almost her complete opposite, but together we were like one. There was no separating us all summer long, from morning till night. For almost ten years we spent summers together. Every time I sat in a dusty and boring city, and socialized with absolutely bland people, I looked forward to summer, to see Mila again and spend a beautiful summer with my best friend. We often went to the sea. Our village was a seaside village, so all summer long we bathed in the salty warm sea and were warmed by its warm rays of sunshine. Then the following unpleasant story happened. When we were about 14 years old, we had a serious quarrel. And as I realize now, our quarrel was so insignificant and stupid that it was as if it should not be at all. It had to do with a local boy. He was three years older than Milka and me and literally drove all the girls crazy. Milka and I were in love with him but he gave his preference to Milka, and we never saw each other again after that. I went back to town. I haven't seen Milka since. For a whole year, every day in the city, I thought about how we'd make up. After all, I had long since forgiven Mila and was counting the weeks, not hours, until I would see her. And that day came. I came to the village, and although it was late evening, and to my grandmother I did not go at once, but ran to our special place by the sea. It was always a little crowded there, for the tides were often high, and we liked very much to fool around there. To my great delight, I saw Mila sitting on the shore. She didn't look at me right away. I, gathering my wool in a fist, and afraid that Milka is still angry with me for what I said to her before leaving, shouted to her, 
Mila. And Milka looked up at me. A smile appeared on her face, so bright and radiant that I immediately knew she had forgiven me. Mila got up from her seat and ran to me. I've been waiting for you so long, she said. I tried to hug Mila, but she pulled away for some reason. I didn't bother to try again. Then I noticed Mila getting nervous. Let's get out of here she said. Why? I asked. Please, please let's leave, she repeated nervously. We walked away. On the way we talked about this and that. I didn't ask questions about Mila. We just chatted about life, almost until the wee hours of the morning. And then Mila said she had to leave right away and that we would meet again later. It surprised me that Mila took a different route. Not the way we usually went home, but on the road through the cemetery. I decided to go home the way I was used to. My grandmother was waiting for me at home. She was a little angry, and when she asked me why I had come to the village in the evening, I answered that I had met Mila, and we had been walking together. In the morning, after all, I hadn't seen her for almost a year. Grandmother was silent and looked at me dumbfounded for a long time. Then she came over to me and touched my forehead. Seems healthy, Grandma said raspily. I was at a loss for words. What did I say wrong? Am I not allowed to go for a walk with my best friend now? What's the matter, Grandma? Mila died, Fume died, and what am I? After all I'm already fifteen, by the way, I remarked indignantly. Grandma sat up and said, So, Milka died in the fall, drowned. At this news, I just involuntarily fell on the couch. Goosebumps ran down my back. What about it? I saw her with my own eyes, chatted with her. How did she die? It turned out that the mine was carried away by the tide into the sea, and three days later her body was found on the shore in a neighboring village. Then I found out that there had been a high tide at night in the place where we liked to walk with Mila. I would have been swept out to sea, just like Mila, but she saved my life. And she came back to save me. Even though it's been over a decade since then, I'm still haunted by that story. And it still scares me when Mila said to her the last time we met, we'll meet again later.